Hi. Hey, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope. Today, we're going to have a very, I think, a beautiful conversation. Dare I say that? I'm going to predict it's going to be a beautiful conversation with Tit Hot, Tit Not, Tit Not Han. I can't, I'm not very good with the pronunciation, but you know who Tit Not Han is, right? So we're going to bring him in an incredible, I will say a peace leader. That's what I'll say. Um, because that's how it feels, his energy as he steps in. I want to talk with him about healing. So let's have a conversation. Tit, not, hun. And he bows in. Hmm. Oh, gentle. It is so beautiful to be able to connect with you today. I... Feel, I feel your presence as an, and, and, I, and I don't want to, um, I know you're very humble and you've been through a lot in your human expression and I don't want to um, make you feel uncomfortable, but I need to, I, I, I feel the personal need to say, you feel like an ascended master and you felt like that in human form here, like this transcendent energy. You're so grounded in peace and it calms me just being in your presence. I hope that everyone who's watching this video can feel that. It says, um, thank you. It says, thank you. I would like to speak about grace. Okay. All right. Grace. What would you like to share about that? There is no formula. There is not one way to receive grace. It is not something that is achieved. It is not of the mind. In fact, the will would rather be or seem, the human will would seem contrary to grace. Although, uh, okay, this is really, you guys, this is tough because his words and my words, I add extra words. He really doesn't need a lot of words. We could just sit here. I could channel energy and hold sacred space. And you, if you're empathic and in tune and understand any kind of energy, you will feel the peace that pours through. I hope that you will take a moment to just do that with me. The image of the lotus flower comes in to create safe and sacred space for our conversation, to honor you and to those who will receive the purest, most beautiful form of energetics through you in this conversation that we have and be blessed because of your presence essence and because of their ability to be open to blessing, to presence, because presence is required. There is so much that is flowing in from his energy. And so I'm going to speak part in his words and part in my words to help you understand the truest essence of what is being shared through feeling because there, there is quite a bit of energy that is soft. It's so soft. It's like a warm cup of tea energetically. Please continue about grace. It is something from your spirit that gifts your heart the support it needs to heal. The mercy that you seek is the begging of the mind to stop the pain. The heart is what processes the pain. And as you have shared, he says, in body. The body is not simply a vessel. Although, if you consider it as a jar to be filled with water or light or air, energy, that perhaps would be the most rudimentary way to describe the body when it actually is this miraculous 
interwoven, collaborative creation through God as a humankind man. To experience suffering, the body must be part of the experience. While the emotional suffering and pain is quite real and can be very raw, the it's gonna pump this up here. There we go. The energetics of what you experience is quite extraordinary, actually but it is beyond the comprehension of the mind. So you must understand it in your human framework, which is the body and the heart. So the feeling and emotion and the feeling and the sensory experience you have, the experiences you have in these ways is, is the processing, which is always in a goal of understanding because understanding, understanding leads to growth. This is what you seek. The balance of acceptance and rejection. Understanding that only you are the true master. The choices that you make are indeed your own. So this grace is about the gift that comes from within to help make sense of, or um, that's not the right words he uses. Can you try it? Can I try again here? Grace is intended as a state of awareness that is heightened during times of suffering and despair. It is a deep seated forgiveness that comes through the God the source inside of you. It's interesting because I'm using the term God because that's how it translates to me, but he's not really, he's not saying God. It's different. And I know he's Buddhist. I know that. I know. I know. But there is this um, assumption of understanding of a collective universal conscious awareness of a source, which internal or personified exists. So that's what I'm just going to share. Hmm. I'm going to do my best to share everything he's saying. Some of this is personal because that would be a natural thing during a conversation, right? With someone who is a teacher to want to teach me directly, right? And I say that because he just said, your back is sore. Yes. Yes. I'm still um, feeling that. Yes. And he says, it would help to release the breath. Try not to hold your breath. That is a form of constriction and restraint. And holding your breath is a way to tighten the grip to, it is contrary to letting go. So when you hold your breath and you squeeze your body, your muscles, when you feel the pain as you move, that is trying to keep the pain in place, keep it small. And what it really needs is the freedom to move, grow, flow, to move away. It needs permission to be let go. So you can ask yourself, what is it that I'm holding in my body at this awareness point of pain and bringing that, bring that grace up from inside you. It literally looks like, um, looks like a flower with like little um, kind of points on it, like a, like a lily or um, an iris or something like that. Iris, iris. And it's like a and little antennas almost is what it looks like, but it's at the base of the body. So it, he literally shows me the image of the lotus and I see like the lily pad and underneath it, I see just all this brown mud, but it's not thick. It's just lightly spread. It's not deep. He's showing me the mud is like a layer across the earth. It's not a, a, an abyss is what he's showing me. It's not an abyss. It's just a layer, like almost like a thick paint, you guys. He's literally showing me like a, 
like a milk chocolate look, just all flattened out, just really smooth, very anything, very gentle. The mud is gentle for you now. It is cooling. It is not. It is soothing. It is. It is the way of almost. Um, he's showing me kind of this transmuting the pain into this prolonged energetic suffering that creates a a opportunity for expanded growth in all the layers of us. So our heart, our understanding, our emotions, our relations and interactions with others, with the natural world, mostly. He says, it's not really the mind that does this. It is the base core of who you are as a human in a body. So it is at the base chakra. So it's like the low base of the hips. So it's the root chakra. That mud is the root chakra. And then up, he shows me the lily pad, which would be the sacral chakra area, which is the area of growth, a platform that if you know about the chakras, the sacral chakra is very um, driven, career-oriented, passion, desire, drive. It's where our reproduction is male or female. It's just really about um, creating the energy of manifestation is there. And so however you choose to use that. So that lily pad is the base. So two like us. And then the lotus. But then he's showing me like points out of a lotus. And I don't think there's any points, but he's showing me like an antenna. He says, ah, as it opens in the different leaves or petals of the flower, each serve their own unique purpose, much like the stages and phases of your life serve a unique purpose. Did you hear that, everyone? Pay attention. Just like the lotus, each of the blooms, the petals that full, fall open, revealing a different stage or level of life. They're unique, but they're still connected to the whole of who we are. So how does grace fit in then? To me, I want to say it's like an elixir, like a honey or something that just is sweet and calms, soothing and sweet. You don't need too much. You just need enough. And he says, um, he's showing me the inner workings of the body. So he, again, we're coming back to the body, grace in the body, grace in the body. Hmm. And I get this combination of forgiveness and being kind, forgiveness and kindness. He says, the only thing that exists is the self and the perception of understanding, the understanding, he doesn't say perception, the self and the perception of self. So what you are experiencing or moving through in life is reflective in your body in the way that you feel, in the way that you move, in the things that you are attracted toward, in the things that are showing in showing up into your life, presenting themselves to you. But there is only self. And so you are the one that gives and receives. There is not really an external, there's only internal. And the internalization is the understanding then that flows out of you to support the environment that you are part of, which is through the beauty of your presence, your existence creates a beauty through all of the mud, all of the pains and the suffering that has created the ripe environment for the lotus to bloom, for you to bloom and have different life experiences in this lifetime. It is possible for grace to exist and for one to not know it or understand it or to ever feel it. It is not necessarily, it does not mean it is, is not there within. It is. It is a natural part of the energy that makes up you. He says, it's like a tool for you. It's like a different um, crystal or rock or a different card that you might pull. It's, it's like that. Wow, it's deep. Okay, can we do something about this low back? Where is it at? Where, where is the pain in your body, Bridget? He says. Hmm. My low right back. 
connected to my sacrum and my hip. Now I can cheat a little, you guys, because I can see it visually and I know that it's related to um, the eight original cells of the sacrum connected to both the root chakra and the sacral chakra. And it is about realignment and a reevaluation of values and belief system that are at the core of me. And so that's part of what's happening, but also the hip on the right side is pulled. It's like, it's kind of going in two directions. I've been adjusted at the chiropractor and I've been to acupuncture. So I, I know that I actually know that the hip was out of alignment. The chiropractor, interesting, last week actually said the hip was the focus. And I thought that's interesting because the hip then would be one of, as the lotus, if you look at your body and your hips being the blooms of the lotus, right? The two, right? And then the third is you coming up, right? And the right piece, the right bloom. So if I use grace as a medicine for this pain, what would that look like? Or how would that feel? I see it as kind of a paste, a, a white paste with like a light pink, lavender and mauve energy. And I see that. And it's interesting because it's focusing on the backside. It's like trying to move forward, but being pulled back and connected to, again, those eight original cells at the sacrum. So that's, that's what I see given this connection. It says, what would it take to be at peace, in peace, with peace? Huh. So if grace is about forgiveness and kindness, now you're asking me about peace. Ah, there's a third component. Grace is forgiveness, kindness, and peace. That's what it is. Forgiveness, kindness, and peace. I see a journal prompt coming on. Grace is forgiveness, kindness, and peace. So what part is this? It says you desire peace. Yeah, I do. Because it's, there's a lot of chaotic, it feels, it feels painful. It feels like it suffers <laughs> me. And there's a lot of chaotic, conflicting, contrasted energy. Yeah, I think in the world as a whole for everyone, but it feels like, yeah, peace is the goal internal peace, internalized, and then expressed in the aura or energy field, not given to other people, you guys, but internalized. And then in the field that creates almost like this greenhouse effect for us. Yeah, that's perfect metaphor, greenhouse effect for us. Kind of like humidity in the air, peace. <laughs> so what would it take for that to be honored, cultivated? or received by you. Let's take a breath. There's a lot of tightness in my low belly. It's definitely sacral chakra. Dreams and desires, mm -hmm. intention for life. Ah, that's the solar plexus. That's a spirit. The intention is the direction and action of the soul moving with the support of the mind external to express externally, exterior. He says, it's interesting because he does say exterior. When I say express outside, he says exterior. <laughs> interesting. Okay. So I feel that there. There is a separation. He says, that's what all pain is caused by a separation. A belief of separate. For some that, I'm going to say isolation, feels like isolation or loneliness. Ah, he says, ah, loneliness serves a purpose. It's not intended to be connected to suffering, but it often is. But the person is never alone because you are with you. You are with you. You have all of the resources in you coming through you to be in a state of loneliness. To be in a state of loneliness is a expression of a misunderstanding of being alone or solo. This time of soloness is needed to offer reflection and rest, not to solve problems. That is a big 
misunderstanding for many. The rest time, the alone time, is not to figure out the things that you are thinking or contemplating or working with. It is intended to create a, a opportunity for you to simply be in a state where you can feel what it is that you desire, the underneath peace. So if you are seeking peace, if you just want peace, want things to calm down a bit, this part would be where you would allow the internal expression. If there is something to be gained from this pain, it is not going to be known when you are in a state of trying to fix it. It cannot give you wisdom. When you, yeah, okay. So they say that pain, it will go away when you, it's taught you what you need to know. Like the situation, the circumstance, right? physical pain, emotional pain, what have you. So what is it that you are wrestling with that is sticking around or keeps coming back? Can you help us with that, with cycles or patterns? Can you help us with that? Hmm. There is something to be gained then with it. It is as you would maybe consider unfinished business, but it's never been intended to be a great mystery or a deep unknown, it is simply for the opportunity to pause, to reflect, to rest. And in the time of caring and sleep, whether it be conscious physical body sleep or meditation, at some point you will receive the knowing, which will bring forward an understanding that will create an open space to allow the pain to move, to shape shift and become known by you in a way that can give you whatever you need in relationship with it. Because it, it certainly does serve a purpose, a relationship to pain. It is a, pain in general is a natural part of the human experience. It is, it is, part of the contrast that creates the opportunity for us to make choices. And the choices can't just be made by the mind. It's, it's gotta be a full, um, I wanna say connection, but he, this, uh, a full experience of life requires one to be able to move through and with, like you showing me like water, swimming through water, swimming with the current, letting like things flo like floating with, just sitting in an inner tube kind of, or a raft and floating down with the current kind of energy because it moves you forward. So pain serves a purpose. The, the concept of suffering isn't something that is for, it's for, and like he's giving me this energy of like advancement through understanding. And that's what you came here for. So the experiences provide understanding. That is what you gain. It's knowledge. You guys, it's knowledge. It's wisdom. That's why we came here for wisdom. And there's an age old battle between our brains and our souls, right? Because what are you, a human or a spirit? You're both. So it's like you got two CEOs. Actually, I have more than that because now we have the body really getting intuitive. And that's definitely a theme I've noticed. The body is super intuitive in good ways and very challenging ways for sure. And the heart has been, there's been an increase in the whole concepts, um, not just spiritual, but now mainstream in counseling and in personal development, self-help of the empath, the highly sensitive person there for years now, for like probably the last six, seven, seven years, probably there's been that deeper understanding and empath has used the term as a broadly, widely accepted thing. 
So it's like a psychological psychology kind of thing. And so that is connected to the heart space and understanding how we work with emotions, right? With. All right, my friends. That's deep, isn't it? Yeah, that's deep. Make sure me a ton of yellow, a lot of solar plexus spirit energy, a lot. Are you saying um, the flowers are blooming? He says in the springtime, the flowers are blooming. He's saying it's just a reflection of the beauty just the reflection of the cycles and the process of life. Mm -hmm. It's a process of suffering, dormancy, finding peace, and recovering through, moving into a new layer, a new place. It provides you with deeper understanding of yourself. Everything truly is a reflection of you, understanding you. All right. Wow, okay, that was awesome. Now I see a little green energy. So green energy, green light or green, the color green comes in as a healing agent. So we're gonna receive that in our heart space, take a nice breath in. And then exhale out. Oh, right. Oh, yawn. Oh, to release the energy and throat chakra. Definitely tapping into that throat chakra as well. So we've talked about the root chakra, the sacral chakra, solar plexus, the heart chakra, and the throat chakra. Oh, yay. <laughs> okay. So this is Bridget. Thanks so much for being here with our channeling conversation from the afterlife with Tit Not Han. Thank you so much for being here. We should have definitely have more deeper conversations in the future. Very much a mellow and peaceful, just beautiful energy. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for watching. I hope we've inspired your spirit today, filled you with some hope. Maybe encouraged you to live your life. It's your life after all. You get to live it. Just live it. Thanks for being here.